I have a dream that all salamanders can live in harmony with humans and are able to thrive in the increasingly polluted world. We're here to help Bob. My friend and I have collected data that can help save the salamanders. Don't worry Bob, here's the data we collected through water testing at Walton Creek. Okay, so our setup, we had the x values represent water temperature in degrees celsius and our y values represent dissolved oxygen in parts per million. To compare the correlation between the two values. Our r square values were all rounded to the fourth decimal place for your consistency and you can see the x and y values on the right and just be sure to pay attention to the underlying values. So the first regression that we found was the linear regression. So as you can see this equation is a fairly good fit for the data however there's still a, lar a, pr a fairly large gap between the uh, minimal two points and the um, actual equation. Okay so now we're at the quadratic regression equation. Our r square value turned out to be 0 0.5073, which is higher than the linear regression equation. And you can see that the quadratic regression equation actually does a pretty great job in representing the value points. And as it has a lesser spacing between the highest points and the lowest points, and it intersects some of the points along the way. So for our cubic regression equation, we calculated it to be the r squared value of 0 0.5091. This is the great. This is the best r squared value we found so far. And as you can see. Um, this um, this is uh, modeled by the um, the graph on your right. Um, as you can see, that the, the uh, equation actually intersects a lot of the points on the graph and is very well spaced um, from all the data points. Okay, power regression equation. R squared was 0 0.4322, which is the lowest one we've had yet, and you can see it on the graph. There's a lot of spacing between the curve of best fit and the higher and lower points, and it doesn't really intersect many lines, or sorry, many points. So for our next regression, we found a natural log equation. As you can see from the graph, this um, the, uh, the equation passes through, um, does a good job of fitting the data. However, it's clearly not, a, doesn't best model the data as well as the cubic and quadratic equations. Now we're on to our final regression equation, the exponential, with, with an r squared value of 0 0.4400. So you can see it doesn't really do a great job. There's a lot of spacing between the current best fit and the higher and lower points and it doesn't intersect many points. So it's really not gonna be one of the best options. So in this graph, as you can see, we um, compared all the different the different regression equations that we found and saw and saw which one uh, best matched the data that we uh, that we calculated. So the uh, quadratic and, cu and cubic equation, equations both best, re best reflected the data that we had and both had the highest R squared values as well. Okay, cubic or quadratic, which one is better? Obviously we've already compared both of them, but, and we can see here that the cubic does have the higher r squared value. Okay, so now we can see here, it seems as if the cubic represents the data better because the distance between the highest points and lowest points are the smallest compared to the curve of best fit. And the cubic equation also intersects more points as compared to the quadratic equation. And this is also supported by the fact that cubic, once again, has the higher r squared value. So in conclusion, the cubic regression equation best models the data. Time for Abe's connections. We already know that the increasing water temperature causes decreasing dissolved oxygen levels. So during warmer seasons like spring, there will be lower dissolved oxygen levels. And what does this mean? Lower dissolved oxygen levels lead to the death of organisms, which ki will kill Bob's friends and family. So obviously when collecting this data, there is going to be some limitations of research. One of these would include measuring the data at different times of the day. And another one would be possibly that the data could be skewed after recent storms uh, where, the, where the dissolved oxygen would go down as there's more um, oxygen demanding waste in the water from lakes such as Thompson Lake. And there's also could be another limitation could be the use of different instruments to measure the data such as electronic thermometers versus handheld thermometers used in different um, times when we were measuring the data. Wow! Thanks for that information. This will help me save my kin.